So today, just a little presentation of kind of what I've been doing mentally, motivationally, spiritually, whatever you want to call it, uh, kind of help me pick up here. Um, so the name of this presentation is Be Other. The reason I chose Be Other is because people that are other are the ones doing big things. Um, you see many people, I'm going to go, I'm use basketball, for example. You see, um, you know, the Golden State Warriors, you see Kobe Bryant, you see LeBron James, you see all these people, right? Everyone on that, at that NBA team, no matter what team it is, they're all good basketball players. I mean, it's the NBA, you have to be good, right? But LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Steph Curry, these people are so other. They're so different than just normal power forward or just normal point guard on the team. And the reason it is because their work ethic, the way they work, they work super hard every single day in order to achieve their goals. Um, a little bit more on Kobe Bryant later, but um, this is like I said, it's called be other. You gotta always try to be other. So, real quick, brief introduction. I mean, you guys pretty much know me. Who am I? Um, Mark Rios, I'm 28. Sometimes I act like I'm 12, you know, whatever. Uh, I always feel like it's good to keep that child, childish energy in you. Um, always have that happy state of mind. Always try to be having fun no matter where you are. I believe that's a big thing. Um, and that's helped me a lot uh, throughout my entire life. Always kind of having a sense of humor, joking about things when things go wrong. Um, I grew up in a single family home uh, to a great, hardworking mother, probably the hardest working lady I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, and that's probably where I get my work ethic from, I would say. Growing up around that scene that every single day, you know, your mom working three jobs you know, to support you. And no fault of her own, maybe she wasn't there all the time, but again, she was supporting me. She loved me to death. Uh, and that made me who I am today, you know. Um, and I do believe that she is my driving motivational factor. Me personally, you might have all these different things, but you know, I really, 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 really believe that one day I'm gonna buy my mother, my mother a house, and I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet. Uh, I haven't really planned it out, but it's gonna happen. And I'm putting that in my mind because she deserves more than that. But unfortunately, how can you give someone the world? You know. Um, besides that, oh, I got off a little soapbox about my mom. Uh, so. I've been working since I was 19 years old. It wasn't always in health and fitness. Uh, I started in banking. Um, started at 19 years old, right out of high school. Started as a teller. Uh, working my way up to supervisor, or working my, my way up to pretty much an officer in a bank, no college degree, no college education, pretty much just based on my work ethic. When I was starting, uh, to, when I became, started becoming a supervisor, I started working about 100 hours every week. Once I was, every two weeks, sorry. Once I was a supervisor, I was working 115 hours every two weeks easily, no matter what. Um, I was the one opening, closing the branch, going to networking events, running meetings. And, but that's what it takes to grow a business. Outside of here and inside of here is doing that. Uh, but yeah, so uh, yeah, I did that um, towards the end of my career. Um, I actually had people just calling me, uh, calling me for products that they needed. My last loan was $43 million, and I didn't do a damn thing. And I equate that to all my work going forward, 110 hours, 112 hours, people getting to know me, people knowing that I'm reliable, I'm gonna always be there. You need something Martin's got. That's kind of what my motto was. Um, so yeah, just sitting at my desk, I phone call for a $43 million loan, and that was just because of good customer service and who I am as a person. And it doesn't matter, because I believe everyone can provide that uh, in your own special way. I don't know what it is, you guys are gonna have to figure that out for yourselves, but I believe everyone in here has the ability to provide the same Customer service, if you want to call it that, or genuine relationship, um, I think anyone here can do it. So, after eight years of doing all that, I kind of went crazy and I took a leap, and here I am starting all over, starting from zero. I was on track, whatever, like I'm not trying, I was on track to make $102,000 last year, and I quit my job. I could have done, I was literally doing anything I ever wanted. And I know Kelly could have taken this back, she's probably making good money too, and now she's starting. But that's what this business is, and that's what any business is. Um, so, pretty much I let my mind stop me for like years, years and years and years, because I was scared. I didn't want to take the leap. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't, I knew this was safe, I knew it was secure, I knew it was stable. Um, but sometimes that just changes when you don't like what you're doing anymore. If you hate it, you don't want to do it anymore. So, um, my next slide is it starts in the mind. I'm a firm believer this is the first place it's ever going to start. You have to think positive throughout the day, every single day, as soon as you wake up. As soon as you wake up, I don't know, tell yourself you're the best. Tell yourself today's gonna be a great day. Tell yourself I'm gonna make a sale. Tell yourself something that's gonna be important and positive to you to make you happy. If you wake up and automatically say, shit, or, well, I'm sorry, I curse a lot, but like, shit, oh, I don't wanna wake up today, oh, I don't wanna go to work, oh, I don't wanna do this, that's just gonna lead you down a more negative loophole. And now that mind 
mindset, it's gonna be in that the entire day. It's gonna be negative, it's not gonna be positive. So start your day off right, that's a really big thing. And I have some quotes here. Um, so a man is what he thinks about all day long. Um, so Ralph Waldo Emerson said it, he's an American philosopher. Uh, I listen to him or read his books um, pretty often. And the reason I say that is, think full time. Stop thinking that I'll never get there, I'm never gonna make it, think full time. And that's just for here. Anywhere else you might have to think something different, but for here you have to think that way. Think I'm gonna make full time no matter what it is. If I have to be here for 13 hours a day, if I have to be here uh, snow, rain on Thanksgiving, on Christmas, on New Year's, whatever, make those sacrifices. You have to make sacrifices in order to grow. And um, that's a big part of my philosophy. Um, this is Earl Nightingale. I don't know if you guys know who he is, he's a motivational speaker uh, back in the day, 60s. Um, but whatever we plan our subconscious mind and nurture our repetition and emotion will one day become a reality. Um, so I equate this to like, listen, if you want to be a millionaire, if you want to be famous, if you want to be anything you want to be, if you want to be the best at something, you have to plant that seed every single day in your mind and water it every single day. You want to be the best, right? I'm going I'm to, for example, I'm going to be the best personal trainer in this building. Whether you believe, you have to believe that you said that. You have to believe in yourself. You can't just go around saying, oh, I'm going to be the best and mope around. You have to believe that you are going to make a difference. You're going to change someone's life by being the best personal trainer that you can be. Because at the end of the day, it's really you versus you. Because everyone's going to eat no matter what. And if you don't want to eat, you're not going to do this stuff. And that's really what it comes down to. Um, my last quote is, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Um, so, going back to you have to believe what you said, it's like practicing anything else. So, we have people in here that have trained for years in whatever sport it was, right? Um, they were thin, they thought like, all right, I'm gonna be good at this, I'm gonna be good at that. How many goals have you had that you taught your mind said, at first, oh, let's get this, let's get this, five seconds later, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, uh, I don't think I can be this person. I don't think I can be full time. I don't think I can be a famous person. I don't think I can be the best. You stop yourself, so you have to catch those negative thoughts. As soon as they arise in your mind, catch them. Okay, um, let's add a bad thought. I'm gonna catch that thought. I'm gonna realize that thought is in my mind, but I'm gonna let it go. I'm not gonna hold on to that thought, because if you keep holding on to that thought, that's gonna shape your day, no matter what it is. If someone hurts your feelings, if someone's bothering you, something, you can't drag that in here. You have to leave that outside, flip the switch. I don't know what it's gonna take for you guys, but you have to, Think positive at all times. I mean, it's not the easiest thing, but it's like anything else. If you want to deadlift 500 pounds, it took me five years to deadlift 500 pounds as a powerlifter. I, every, almost every single day I would deadlift three, four times a week. It took me five years, and did I get, I wasn't good at it at first, and just like my power and my thought, I wasn't always good at being positive. But every day I practice and practice and practice and practice, and now I'm getting to a point where I feel like I'm having better understanding of my own emotions um, and catching those thoughts as they arise. And you guys can do the same thing. I mean, it really, it really starts in mind every single day. So, uh, be there or be square. So most of you are gonna hate to hear this, but it's the truth. You have to be here. You have to be here. See, I, I did this because it's kind of funny, right? Be there or be square. And you know, you have the little pump Kanye video, whatever. I used to be this way. I'd be, I was like, all right, I'm done with my day. Let me get the fuck out of here. I don't wanna be here, I'm done. Like, I have all day to do whatever I want. Half the time I don't even sit there. Is that productive? No, being here is productive though. Because I'm gonna tell you, I was sitting on that couch last uh, two weeks ago and I got two weeks of this for just sitting there. Jesse came up to me and Jason came up to me and they were like, yo, we gotta meet for the next week, we gotta meet for today, you wanna do it? Of course I wanna do it. <laughs> I mean, I wanna be full time, right? So just being here is gonna be a big thing. Like, today for me is a 10 hour day. I mean, I know Kelly has a long day today, I know some of you other people have a long day today, but this is the sacrifice you have to make. So being here is half the battle. Um, I have two pretty good quotes. Uh, you can pretend to care, but you can't pretend to show up. And that's by um, George L. Bell, he's a philosopher. And it's true, like, you can have the meetings with Derek, you can have the meetings with Megan, or, or Andrew, or whoever, Stat John, whoever, and act like you give the fucking world shit of this place. Oh, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. But at the end of the day, they notice. If you're, they, you can say everything you want to say, but if they're not stupid, they see who is here, and they see who's not here. So you can tell them that you want to be here, but if you're not here, believe me, they know. Um, and Robert Johnson, he's an engineer, he said, the world is run by those who show up. And I 100% agree with that. Uh, I say this, and I'm not throwing any political spectrum out here, but Donald Trump, he's president, right? Guess what he did? What did he do? He showed up. He was there. 
right? He's a celebrity, he's an artist. Um, he might have not won whatever, I'm not trying to get into the whole, whole, whole thing. He just, he just showed up and he acted, he acted as if. He acted, I'm gonna run this country, I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna run this country, and he became president somehow, some way. Don't know, but he did it. So if he can do something like that, any of you guys can do pretty much anything, I'm pretty sure of it. Okay, building relationships. So for me, this is actually the most important slide. Um, uh, at my last job before I left, my title was actually relationship specialist. Uh, I was really good, and I still am really good at building relationships. It's very important, and not just this industry and white, to build relationships. Um, so, this is the, a group of my friends. This is Arizona. Um, that's a lead singer, that's a keyboard player, and the guy in the unicorn is a guitar player. I actually met them here, but uh, I became super cool with them to a point where they've been flying me out to LA, they flew me out to Austin, I went to Chicago with them, I've been behind that backstage Madison Square Garden. Um, I can keep going on with the list, but, so I know everyone in the circle. I build relationships with everyone in the circle. I can name them all by names, I'm not going to, but I can. But you want to know what the most important thing is? Is this guy. You want to know why? No one knows who he is, right? I do. That's Uncle Joni. Uncle Joni started 14 years ago as a security guard. One of his friends told him, hey, yo, you want to work security for us here at whatever industry it was? He said, yeah. Um, and he's been doing it for 14 years. And that's important because I may never see him again, ever in my life. But if I see him and I'm like, yo, Uncle Joni, you know good that's going to make me feel? He might not remember me. He might not know exactly who I am. But just the fact that you are a member for nothing, is, it makes me feel really good. Just like here on the gym floor, someone walks up to you, it's as simple as saying their name. That's it. There's a, a good book, How to Win Funds and Influence People. I'm not gonna get into the whole book, but there's a part in the book where um, there was this Greek gentleman, his, his name was very, very hard to pronounce. It was like a long Greek name, uh, and no one could ever pronounce it. So everyone just called him George. George, whatever George. One day he got a cold call from, a, this was back in the day, so it was different, but he got a cold call from um, someone from some insurance company, and the gentleman on the phone used his full name. The, the guy that actually picked up started crying because he hadn't heard his full name in 12 years because he hasn't been home in 12 years, so everyone just called him George. He said his full name. It's a really good book by Dale, uh, Dale Carnegie, How to Work Lens and Influence People. I highly recommend that book if you want to build relationships. Um, but it's not only that. So you have to find clues like people on the gym floor. You have to look at their shirts, their shoes, like what kind of cars they're driving, what they're into, if they like the stock market. You can go, it's simple as this. There was someone on the gym floor, I'll give you an example, he was wearing, um, it, the shirt said SIG, S-I-G. It's a gun manufacturer. Many people probably don't know that if you're not into shooting guns, whatever, I like to shoot guns, whatever. Um, went up to him, I was like, hey man, is that six hour? He's like, yeah, look, automatically with friends. He likes guns, I like guns, hey, let's go shoot. Go, oh, where do you shoot, what do you do, what kind of guns do you have? I mean, yeah, sure, guns are like a big topic, but that's what he likes, that's what he enjoys, so I'm gonna enjoy it with him. You know, I'm genuine and I care, and I wanna build that relationship, so now we're friends. Now, did I sell him right then and there? Maybe not. But, you know, that, that relationship develops, develops, he's gonna start trusting me, and trust is a big part of relationships. So, he's gonna start trusting me, I'm gonna come cool with him. Most likely, at the end of the day, if I asked him, hey man, do you wanna you know just hear you me, or do you wanna you know, do a me? Probably done. But I'm not a direct guy. I like to make you my best friend first, because then you feel obligated. That's my style. Everyone has their own different style. Um, we also, you know, this is another quote, we have two ears and one mouth, so we can listen twice as much as we speak. You gotta be genuine in your conversations. It's gonna be very important um, to actually actively listen. I know they go over it with the equal fit, but even on the gym floor, actively listen, be genuine, don't talk too much. Um, you can even talk yourself out of a sale by just being more interested in yourself than someone else. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and the last thing is um, always ask questions, like almost on your date where you're interviewing this person. Oh, what's your favorite color? Uh, what do you do? What's your favorite car? Oh, you like this? You like that? You like soccer? You like basketball? What do you like? because you're gonna find their interest. Once you can find a common interest, that's gonna give you time to build ground on anything else. So that's the first thing you can start, is building common interest with something that you know that they're gonna enjoy. And the last thing is network, whether it be in here or even outside events, because I know we're allowed, I believe, right, to go outside um, and try to bring people in as well. So if you can do that, I mean, hey, more power to you. That's actually awesome, uh, because you know that they're gonna be yours, right? Go out, bring them in, most probably you're gonna sell them. So, 
network. Very important, whether it be uh, like at a Rotary event, I know that's stupid, but people do it. Rotary, uh, Chamber of Commerce, you can even do um, networking events at like Maggiano's, Bonefish Grill, they're all over the place. Okay, so what's your style? Um, Bruce Lee said my style, you can call it the art of fighting without fighting. So that's pretty much me saying use your energy wisely. That's how I interpret it. Uh, you gotta, yeah, you gotta use your energy wisely. If you don't use your energy wisely, you're just gonna be tired or burnt out or whatever it is. So my point is with this is what comes naturally to you. So for me, you know, um, I, I like to box. I like to be high intensity and I wrestled my whole life, I boxed my whole life. So that just comes naturally to me. So why can't I use that with my clients? Um, but it can be anything. It can be athletic, it can be functional, it can be corrected. Uh, so whatever your niche is and whatever you feel most natural doing is probably the route you should go. Uh, so yeah, pretty much use your energy wisely. Find your niche, which is pretty simple. Um, if everyone is doing it one way, there's a good chance you can find your niche by going the exact opposite direction. Uh, Sam Walton said that from Walmart. If you guys don't know who he is, he's like one of the richest men in the world. Um, and clearly he does everything different than most retailers. Amazon took a page out of his book and whether they want to admit it or not is the truth. Um, everything's discounted on Amazon. I mean, Walmart, right? You get everything for super, super cheap price. But if you go to a grocery store, you can't. Um, there's a lot of political factors behind it. We won't get into it. But I do believe that that's a very good quote. Um, so do something different. Don't be the same. I believe any, anyone in here can write a program. And I know you all can because we have to go through it. We go through classes. We go through this. We sit down with our managers. So we all can write programs. But what can you do differently or better than anyone else? Whether, again, be stretching, correcting, mobility, dance, running, no matter what it is, you can do something better than someone else in here. And that's simple as that. So again, mine was boxing, um, and I just found out that that was the easiest thing for me to start doing, to start building up clients. And honestly, if it wasn't for Andrew, I'm gonna be real, if it wasn't for Andrew just telling me one day, I was on the floor, he's like, dude, it was like his third day here, he's like, dude, set up a table. And that's literally how it started for me. I just set up, he was like, set up a boxing hill, put some gloves out, put a sign-up sheet down. That's what I did, and kind of just picked up. And in November, I had 58 leads, 58. Um, and I got most of them in. I'm still working on some people now, but it's a ton of people. And I can always still reach out to them if I need to. So this is important, study, study, study. Obviously, you want to be the expert in your field. Uh, the info in this, this industry is constantly changing, uh, always. I mean, whether it be from nutrition, whether it be from lifting, whether it be from rep brain, this or that, or a diet fad, or whatever it is. In, in this industry, it's always a never ending changing. So you always have to be on top of things. You, it's like almost being a doctor, right? yeah, you got continue education credits, but if you don't stay up to date with the knowledge, it's like you're gonna be a bad personal trainer. I mean, that's what it comes down to. If you're still using techniques that they used in the 1970s, which some might work still short, but some are outdated or antiquated, you know, it might not be most efficient. Um, immerse yourself in knowledge. Every day, no matter what it is, like it doesn't have to be fitness. If you guys like something else that is not fitness, immerse yourself in that knowledge. It can be quantum physics. I don't know what you guys like, but it could be. If you love quantum physics, immerse yourself every single day in that. If you love music, learn how to play music. If you love dancing, learn learn every single day. New steps, do this, or whatever. So immerse yourself in knowledge. Um, for this particular thing, though, it's going to be more fitness related. Um, you know, so for me, I'm always studying boxing clips. I'm always watching video. I'm always watching tape. But I'm also watching mixed martial arts fighters because, like, again, everything's changing. It's being able to mesh things together is going to be very important. Um, and knowledge is only potential. Action is power. You have to put action into whatever you're going to do. So that's the next slide. Take massive action. Just do it. Um, you guys know this video. I'm sure you've seen it a million times. But your direct effort is 100% of your results. So if you're juggling too many things at once, you're not really putting 100% effort into it. If you think like, oh, I'm at Equinox, I'm gonna put 100% effort into this daily, but then you're like, oh, well, I'm gonna go do this later, I'm gonna leave work, go do this. You didn't really put 100% in here today. You only put like maybe 70 or 80. You really have to dive head in first. Um, so yeah, uh, this is very important, I feel, because I believe this is very true. There are many people out there, less qualified than you, that are doing better. Why? Because they jumped in head first. And that's really simple as it. I know you all have more potential than half the people you see on Instagram, because that's what it is, right? You got a big butt or yeah, you're jacked. You're a personal trainer now on Instagram. You have 100,000 followers. But guess what? You guys are doing it all better than that. You guys have more knowledge than them. Just because they look good, just because they act a certain way, just because of that doesn't mean that they're actually personal trainers. 
So taking that action, whether it be staying here, whether that be studying, whether that be you know uh, reading a book or even doing something like this to change your life, you got to take that action. So um, I really firmly believe that you have to be passively, or how I should say, you should be patiently active. So you have to have patience in this industry. Obviously, clearly, we've all been here for quite some time. Uh, so you have to have that patience, but you have to do it actively. What I mean by that is, yes, have patience, but always hone your craft. Um, whether it's working out, trying new things, whether it's studying, whether it's um, reading new books, whether it's opening your mind to different things, you have to understand that that's the only way that meaningful change is gonna happen. It's never gonna happen by only thinking about it. And that's, that's the point I'm trying to make here. So all these progressions is always about thought, right? But the last slide is about taking massive action, because if you're not taking that action and you're just thinking, it's not gonna fall into your lap. And that's just, you know, that's just what it is. So um, that's pretty much what I have for today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And 